हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ज्ञान संपदा इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लास ऑफ मैग्नेटिक रेजोनेंस वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट ईएसआर दैट इज इलेक्ट्रॉन स्पिन रेजोनेंस एंड वी सॉ दैट बेस्ड ऑन द रेडिएशन व्हिच इज एब्सॉर्ब्ड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्टिंग्विश मेनली टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ रेजोनेंस फिनोमेना वन इज ईएसआर एंड अनदर वन इज एनएमआर सो ईएसआर दैट इज इलेक्ट्रॉन स्पिन रेजोनेंस we have already discussed in our previous class and today our class will be dealing with nmr that is nuclear magnetic resonance so as told earlier the principle and working is almost same in both the cases however the application is going to differ so if you have not gone through the previous class then first go through it and then continue with today's class so let's start our today's class which is mainly based on nuclear magnetic resonance as such we can observe in the heading magnetic resonance means again magnetic field is involved and certain energy is supplied which will be absorbed and whenever there is a maxima we say it a resonance so if we compare it with electron magnetic resonance clearly we can say that in emr electron is going to absorb energy and here in nuclear magnetic resonance nucleus is involved so nucleus means positive charge core so we can say here protons are involved in the resonance phenomena and today our class is mainly based on nmr where we are going to see what actually it is what is the working principle little bit of history the arrangement of the apparatus as well as applications of nmr so let's get started with our today's class so first nmr it is also called as npr which is analogous to epr so npr means nuclear paramagnetic resonance which is similar to that of electron paramagnetic resonance and in the previous class we have seen that paramagnetic resonance means the sample is mainly paramagnetic that's why nmr is also called as npr or esr is also called as epr so how it is going to work so mainly first thing we need is the magnetic field so when a static magnetic field let us say capital h is applied as a result of spatial quantization of nuclear moments or we say nuclear magnetic moments 2i plus 1 states are split into levels with energy mi gn mu bn into h so same as that of epr so whenever we are going to apply some static magnetic field then the states will split up into different levels and each level will be having energy equal to mi gn mu bn into h so here n relates to nuclear means with respect to proton and earlier it was with respect to electron so as we move on just try to link the concept with epr so that by comparison we can study it more conveniently so as we had seen when we apply magnetic field we observe zeeman splitting the same thing is here also so once the states are split into levels we can study about the transitions and the transitions can be induced between the levels by applying certain alternating field with a frequency h cross omega is equals to minus gn mu bn into h so this is the energy and frequency is omega omega is equals to minus gn e by 2 mp into c into h so just we have divided by h cross and we know that bohr magneton or nuclear bohr magneton mu bn is equals to e h cross divided by 2 mp into c so mp is the mass of the proton and let us call this equation as equation number 1 so if we look at this equation number 1 we can see in the denominator there is mass of a proton and we know that mass of a proton is approximately equal to 1830 times of that of a mass of a electron so if we compare 
NMR with EPR, then we can say nuclear resonance frequency occurs at much lower frequency than that of a electronic resonance. Because in electronic resonance there will be Me, but here it is Mp that is 1830 times of Me. So the frequency is going to decrease. And we say that the resonance condition numerically is given as nu is equals to 2.13 gn into h. Here nu is in kilocycles or we can say kilohertz whereas h is in terms of oestates. So if h is in kilo oestate region then the resonance absorption occurs at radio frequencies and we know that generally radio frequency means 4 to almost 900 megahertz and we say the resonance is going to take place for the radio frequency that is just by solving these things we have got this equation because omega is equals to 2 pi nu and if we put the values of these standard things like charge velocity of light then easily we can find out what is the resonance condition nu is equals to and when we calculate it it is going to be occurring at radio frequency region so as such the nuclear resonance apparatus is much simpler as lumped parameter circuit methods may be employed here so these are the basic things like the similarity between epr and npr so only difference is with respect to the frequency region where absorption is going to take place other things application of static magnetic field as well as alternating field remains as it is then moving to more details like history and the arrangement it is said that nuclear resonance was first observed in the year 1945 by Block et al and Purcell et al but it was the first successful thing and Previously, some unsuccessful attempts were also done by Gotter. So, the initial apparatus given by Block is something like this. We can observe there are two electromagnets, one and two. And in between, there is a paramagnetic sample kept, which is having one coil, coil number one, and also another coil, coil number two. So, here, Static magnetic field is applied along this direction using the electromagnets and due to the static magnetic field we observe the splitting of states into levels and then we are going to apply alternating field via coil 1. So RF is applied via coil 1 which is thus called a transmitter and due to this transmitted signal some amount of signal will be induced onto coil number 2 and as the induced signal is picked up by coil number 2 this coil is called as receiver coil and for nuclear absorption coil number 2 is missing and signal is even detected using coil number 1. So this is just the brief details about the block apparatus which he had used where we can understand the application of magnetic field as well as alternating field. So if this is a z-axis then along z-axis magnetic field is applied then along x-axis we have applied h1 which is the alternating field and finally a voltage or the signal will be created and will be observed along y direction. So as such nuclear resonance apparatus is much simpler as lumped parameter circuit methods may be employed here. So as we saw alternating field to H1 cos omega t is applied perpendicular to the static field H and that is done via coil number 1 and then solving for the equations of motion and we get the solutions of equations of motion which shows the component of magnetization which is rotating in xy plane that is component of magnetization is m plus and m minus and that will be rotating 
in xy plane because the static field is applied along z direction and in the perpendicular direction to that of the applied static field we observe the precision or rotation of magnetization and that amount is given by equation number 3 which is m plus minus is equals to gamma h1 mz divided by gamma h plus omega into e raised to plus or minus i omega t. So this is what is the solution we have already solved while solving the line width or the basic principle of paramagnetic resonance. So in this equation number 3 even we can include damping term which we have studied under line width correction or else only this much is enough. And due to this a voltage will be induced in coil number 2 having its axis along y direction and the value of voltage is given by epsilon that is voltage is equals to minus 4 pi a divided by c into my a is the effective cross sectional area of the coil and my is the corresponding change of y component of magnetization and as we are studying resonance phenomena at resonance we say that m plus minus my and therefore epsilon will have their maximum value because resonance itself means maximum absorption. So maximum absorption relates to the maximum voltage and voltage is related to my and m plus minus is nothing but mx plus minus imy. So each and everything is related and at resonance all these factors are going to become maximum and these are some of the details which is based on our previous knowledge of basic principle of paramagnetic resonance so whole derivation is done in that class you can just check the playlist section where we have a playlist named magnetic resonance and then remembering this diagram we are going to study about two different types of arrangements of coils. So first one is the axis of coil number one is perpendicular to the axis of coil number two. In this type of arrangement the advantage is that there is no voltage which will be directly induced into coil number two due to the current flow in coil number one. So voltage induction will be not there and such method of detection is known as nuclear induction. And this type of arrangement where coil 1 and coil 2 were kept perpendicular was first used by Felix Bloch and thus this type of arrangement is also called as block arrangement. While moving to the second type that is another probability is by keeping coil number 1 not perpendicular to coil number 2. So we can say both are lying along same direction or both the coils are parallel to each other and in that case we can say these two coils are going to be the same coil itself. So there is no necessity of two different coils only one coil is enough and this type of arrangement was used by Edward Mills Purcell and this arrangement itself is generally used as experimental setup for NMR. So only single coil is enough for the resonance studies. So this arrangement given by Bloch was the earlier invention or it is called as Bloch apparatus and this arrangement where only single coil is enough was given by Purcell and that is used generally where only one coil is enough. So these are some of the details about NMR. So see you in our next video. Till then practice more, study well and thank you for watching.